A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. This video is intended as a game walkthrough. It is not a speedrun. All strategies in this video were made for efficiency and success rate. Please watch the entire video and listen carefully to the commentary before trying any of these strategies for yourself. Hello everyone, this is a no damage run of Dead Space on Impossible Difficulty. Isaac, it's me. I wish I could talk to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. I wish I could just talk to someone. It's all falling apart here. I can't believe what's happening. It's strange. Such a little thing. How many times you watched that thing? Guess you really miss her. Don't worry, we're almost there. You'll be able to look her up once we're on board. Sounds like you do have a lot of catching up to do. All right, everyone, we're here. It's sinking our orbit now. All this trouble over that chunk of rock. Deep space mining is a lucrative business, Miss Daniels. Aegis 7 is a gold mine, according to prospectors reports. Cobalt, silicon, osmium, now, where is she? There she is. We have visual contact. So that's Ishimura. Impressive. The USG Ishimura. Biggest planet cracker in her class. And it looks like they already popped the cork. Why is it all dark? I don't see any running lights. Corporal, take us in closer and hail them. And stay clear of that debris field. We're here to fix their ship, not the other way around. USG Ishimura, this is the emergency maintenance team of the USG Kelyan responding to your distress call. Come in, Ishimura. You're gonna need to boost the signal if their power's yes, low. Yes, we know. Boost the signal. More. Never heard of a total communications blackout on one of these things. You'd think with a thousand people on board, someone would pick up the phone. What is that? It's a busted array like we thought. Sounds like they're having problems with their encoder. You get us down there and Isaac and I can fix it. 48 hours max. All right, you have the lady. Take us in, let's see what needs fixing. Gravity tethers engaged. Automatic docking procedures a go. What the hell? Sir, the auto docking. What is it? We're off track, we're gonna hit the hole. Hit the blast shields. That guidance tether is damaged. Switch to manual, now. Inside the magnetic field? Are you insane? Abort! No! We can make it inside. Corporal, gave you an order. The field is too strong. Is everyone okay? I just saved our asses, Miss Daniels. If we had aborted at that speed and distance, we'd have smashed right into the side of the Ishimura. Now settle down, let's get to work. Corporal, report. I'm not getting any readings from the port booster, and we've lost comms and autopilot. It'll take some time to fix. All right, let's get some extra hands from flight deck to help out.
Hold still, Isaac. I'm syncing up everyone's rig with the ship. Okay, we're done. Clean bill of health for everyone. All right. We've still got a job to do. We're moving out. First thing to note, this is the PC version of the game. I have my frame rate locked to 200 using Riva Tuner. And I'm using the mouse fix in order to make the PC port actually even function at all. Welcome, CEC employee, to the USG Ishimura. You didn't lose power to the, the port Ishimura booster. The you lost the port booster. Class vessel. Unbelievable. And is now the oldest serving with 62 years of continuous service. It holds the record for highest number of planet cracks with 34 to date and highest dead weight of refined product at 14 trillion kilotons and counting. Whether you'll be joining us aboard the Ishimura or strengthening the extraction workforce Guess on the, the power's down everywhere. The captain and crew will Isaac, like welcome, get over here and hack the door pad. We hope your stay is a pleasant one. Concordance Extraction Company. You are ground to act into the future. Seems like everyone was trying to pack in a hurry. There should be a security detail in here. Yeah? Well, there's not. There's nobody here. I can't pick up any broadcasts. But that security console is still live. Isaac, log in and see what you can find. Kendra, get that elevator back online. Power's dead. I can't. Then we root the damn power! Look, if we all cooperate, we can figure this out a lot sooner. Let's get that computer display up, Isaac. Here's the locator system to find your next Doesn't look good. She's taking a lot of damage. The tram system's offline. Getting around is going to be difficult. The air seems to be flowing again. That's a start. What the hell was that? Automatic quarantine must have tripped when the filtration system restarted. Everybody relax. Not sure. What the hell? I don't know. Something's in the room with us. Jesus! Over fire! Over fire! Get power! Come on! Come on! Got it! Isaac, get the hell out of there! The door's open! Run! Run like hell, move in as straight a line as possible. Get the hell out of there! If you bump into any walls, then the Necromorph will hit you. A second ago I mentioned a mouse fix. So there is some pretty bad mouse acceleration and uh, the input lag is really bad whenever you have V-Sync enabled and you're running at like lower frame rates. Uh, but as long as you keep the frame rate under 200, it should remain stable and you should experience not quite so many bugs. But uh, the mouse fix makes it so that you can actually take raw mouse input from Windows instead. So it makes it possible to even aim in this game at all on the PC version. Otherwise, this is, this is not a great port. So we gotta hit that fuse, then open the door, and then stand to the left over here. 
so that the Necromorph leaps in. That's trying to be the grab tutorial, but we are going to circumvent that grab tutorial by merely standing to the left and letting the Necromorph jump past us. Everybody, lift it up. They used the vent. That's how they're getting around the ship. Stay away from you. Get back. Get back. Isaac. Isaac. God, I can't believe you made it. Isaac. <laughs> we ran to more of them on the way over here. Are you okay? More what? What the hell are those things? Is that the crew? Keep your voice down. Whatever they are, they're not friendly, and half the doors on this ship are locked because of the quarantine. Now, we have to get to the bridge, but first, we gotta repair the tram system. You're crazy, Hammond. You're gonna get us all killed. If you listen to me, I'll get you out of here alive. Now, what's wrong with the tram? The data board is fried, but there should be a spare in the maintenance bay. There's also a broken tram blocking the tunnel that needs to be repaired. Damn it! Everything is on the other side of this quarantine. We can't reach it from here. No, we can't. But you can. Isaac, if I can get to the bridge, I should be able to access the personnel files. You fix the tram, and I'll help you find Nicole. Use the map screen to check objectives and important locations. As far as where to find the mouse fix, you may find it on PC Gaming Wiki. Do a quick Google search and you'll find it. Also, it should be noted that I don't pick up every file. In order to get the achievement, you just have to pick up 150 files or logs of literally any kind. You just have to pick them up 150 times and it'll count towards getting the achievement. Like, you don't have to pick up 150 logs. We have the stasis Looks module like here. Malfunctioning, Isaac. Try using the stasis module you just picked up. In order to get through stasis doors, you need to hit the stasis while the door is opening. If you hit it while the door is closing, then the stasis proc will run out before you can actually go through the door and you'll get hit. Any necromorph that you do not kill has the possibility of being able to follow you into another room via vents. They cannot open doors, but they can go through vents. So taking note of where vents are is pretty important. Your stasis module should be able to help you with that arm mechanism. Power nodes are for upgrades. The most ammo efficient way to get rid of basic necromorphs is to stun them and take out their arms. Once that clamp clamps that uh, lift or whatever, we'll just use stasis and then we press the button in the center. Retracing damage tram car. Please stand by. You did it. The tram is blocking the whole system. When you get the computer online, you'll be able to call the tram from the control room. Faster the better. I can hear something crawling around out there. As we are on our way out, uh, we don't actually need to kill these guys, but... Uh, it can be noted that the plasma cutter does actually uh, pierce through any limbs that you sever. So I was able to kill that uh, necromorph with two shots by simply stunning it at a specific point in its animation, standing to its side and just uh, dismembering its attacking arms. As long as you get rid of a necromorph's ability to attack, you will kill it.
On our way to this door, we want to go ahead and use stasis on this Necromorph. Isaac, I've patched into the deck security system. It took some work, but I've got the door to the maintenance bay unlocked. The data board should be somewhere inside. So we go through this door, we're going to take a right, head past this uh, Necromorph over here. We're at Chapter 1, we're mostly just going to use stasis to get around a lot of these guys. Isaac, it's Kendra. It looks like the door to the storage room is locked. There should be a key somewhere in the maintenance bay. The reason why I tend to use stasis on all the enemies in Chapter 1 is just so that I can save plasma cutter rounds. This one's right here. We'll just use stasis to stun both of these guys right here. We're not going to dilly-dally around with anything else. We're just going to go directly to this lift, and we're going to go up. Now, because those necromorphs are still alive, they're going to come out of the vent to the left of this elevator as we're coming out. I sever the arms on this one. Grab the, uh, grab the key card there. Stun this guy as he's coming out. Now pay attention to the window on the right of this elevator. If there is no necromorph on the right, then we can just uh, go directly to the right, like this. Otherwise, we have to use stasis. We'll open this door. Grab that logic board. We'll pick up everything in this room, especially that power node. Power nodes are precious. That's it, Isaac. Take the board back to tram control and slot it into the computer array. That should get the tram system back online. Use stasis on that one as he's getting up. Press the button. Stun those guys if they get too close. Just use a stun shot from the plasma cutter. Those med packs that I picked up, we're just going to sell them. Two of them here. We're just going to stun them both. You can pick up that medium med pack right there if you want. Medium med packs actually sell for uh, like 2,000, which is quite a lot at this stage in the game. We'll place the logic board in and then we will go. Control computer now online. Shipwide tram system reinitialized. All trams now operational. Tram arriving at flight deck station. Quarantine lifted. All right, we're on board and heading to the bridge. Good work. Strange. The quarantine just lifted. Whatever was in the flight lounge must have left. That's lucky for us. Isaac, get back to the Kelion and prep it for launch. We'll find out what we can from the bridge and meet you there. If we live that long, you're out of your league, Hammond. This is suicide. We're going your to die out here. Your lack of confidence in me is duly noted, Miss Daniels. But I have a mission to complete, and that's exactly what I am going to do, with or without you. Do we understand each other? Just get us out of here alive. So this room is a little bit tricky. What we want to do is we want to try to use the stasis on this guy once we round the corner here because he's going to go through this vent. Or you can just go ahead and shoot out his leg. If you shoot at his leg, he's obviously going to be significantly less mobile. But uh, shooting at his leg allows us to just go through this we door here. The it's a nightmare up here. No survivors. We're going to try to get the command computer. Wish us luck. And these stasis packs, these stasis packs are gold, especially in areas where there's no stasis recharge. Because some chapters actually only have like one stasis recharge point, like ever. The grab, uh, the grab range for items, especially items that you drop, is like pretty huge. So you need to like step pretty far out of the way if you're trying to drop another item to grab another item. The ping statue is directly on the right of the screen in that crevice there, so we can't get that until chapter 11. I 
did get kind of lucky here. And I just like used a single shot to the legs to just stun all three of these guys. Obviously really hard to do with a controller, but no, I'm not going to play this game with a controller. The enemies are way too fast for that. That was our ride home. It's the only way off the ship. Kendra. No, Hammond! This changes everything! Just let me think. Can you access the command computer? It's no good. There's an executive lockdown of all primary systems. Without the captain's authorization, I can't access them. Well, where's the captain? Here he is. Captain Benjamin Mathias. Location? Med lab. Status? Deceased. What? How? I can't access that information. Find the captain and you'll find his rig. With his authorization codes, I can crack this computer wide open. Damn it. Isaac, I'm sending the tram back to your location. Get to the medical deck and find that rig as fast as you can. What was that? I've sold everything except uh, that pack of four. Um, that pack of four plasma cutter rounds, plasma energy, and I also put away the uh, kinesis recharge. Are you there? We were attacked. Kendra's gone. One minute she was there, and I, I can't believe I lost her. We can still do this. Get me the captain's rig codes, and we'll find Nicole. Looks like the crew barricaded the door to the emergency wing. We have to blow through it to get to the morgue. Get some thermite from medical storage and a shock pad from zero G therapy. Should be down the corridor. Communication is useless in all this static. So the line gun serves two purposes. One, it allows us to very quickly and very easily get rid of a lot of necromorphs without like having to go through a bunch of complicated motions. And two, the ammo actually sells for a lot at this stage of the game. On heavy that this Start by upgrading Kinesis completely, because Kinesis is uh, very good for, uh, you know, just like grabbing things from farther ranges is very good. And you can grab like items from really far away by just simply using Kinesis and then pressing the pickup button, like I did just there to pick up those line racks. Run over here, do a quick stasis recharge, and then drag that over there. Actually, just stun that guy and then do the quick stasis recharge. That's what I did there. It's a bit risky, but doable. So, stasis recharge, or stasis has like a very weird hitbox. It's probably for the best to try to aim a little lower so that the uh, splash from the stasis affects. Uh, affects the enemy a little easier. Because if you aim higher, then it's possible your stasis will miss. Personally, I really, really hate the stasis hitboxes because even when it looks like it should absolutely hit, you know, is able to set his it often does not. Your grab boost will kick in when you enter a zero-G area. The developers of this game did a very, very bad job with the hitboxes and I am not going to apologize for that statement. Zero gravity. Great. You got a shot pad. Come by 
find that with the thermite at the barricade to destroy it. Shit. I can hear more coming. Moving through the vents. Stay safe, Isaac. These basic necromorphs, these basic leapers. We don't really have to uh, worry about them very much, but you know, a single uh, a single bomb will kill one. Like a single uh, propane tank or whatever. Explosive barrel. Once we get out of here, we're going to look over here and uh, shoot that guy. By the way, a little bit earlier passing through this room, you probably saw me pick up a 10,000 credit chit. Also, I did not mean to use kinesis there. I meant to use uh, stasis while we're opening this door, so we don't have to worry about that one. Stun both of these guys, recharge our stasis, and uh, then another one is going to come out of the vent here. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and use stasis on it, and then uh, use the elevator. But as you can see, sometimes you can accidentally stasis the elevator that you're trying to use, and it will mess up exactly what you're trying to do. So I stunned that guy a couple of extra times. We have, you have to go to the uh, you have to go to the edge of the elevator if you're going to try to stasis those uh, leapers right there. But if you aim it right, the stasis should work. And also, we got to watch out for these. Uh, I call them boogers because that's pretty much what they are. They're just they're just they're just living boogers. Just square yourself up to the doorway and uh, aim down, and the splash from the stasis should affect all of them. There. That could be either plasma rounds or it could be uh, mine racks. All the ammo is randomized in this game depending on the guns that you have in your inventory. It'll, probably, it'll just give you more ammo depending on the guns you have in your inventory. Once we're in here, a quarantine state will trigger. Uh, what I do is I like to run directly for the elevator, but for some reason, whenever I was mashing F, the elevator didn't work. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, stasis these guys and fire a mine at their feet. So the thing about the mines is the mines arc. Because segmented runs are a way for me to simultaneously learn the game and also complete a game without taking any damage. probably notice that this run in particular is not done without saving. I didn't actually realize at the time that the mines arced. I did it was it was maybe in I don't know like chapter eight or something that I figured that out. I don't remember. Anyway. While the elevator is going down we're gonna sever the arms off of that crawler right there. And we're gonna recharge our stasis here real quick. It's probably a lot safer to fight these guys out in the open. If you try to hold yourself up in a room, then you have to uh, you have to fight them as they come out of vents, and that is not a very good uh, range to be trying to fight them with uh, with mines because the mine black bat the mine back blast back blast <laughs> the mine back blast will damage you. But in general, throughout like the early portion of the game, at least until you encounter like uh, enhanced necromorphs, the line gun mines are actually very, very strong. And will instantly kill like the very basic, uh, the very basic versions of the necromorphs. The video feed from the colony, and what I saw was glorious, breathtaking. 
miners undergoing a transformation into something extraordinary. I must know more. Even as the believer within me wants to become one of them, the scientist needs to uncover their secrets. I need to study one of these necromorphs as kind as... What in God's name is going on down there? I think that's precisely the point, Doctor. God's work. I'm not so sure of that. We have to assume that the colony's problems are somehow connected to the marker. You can assume all you want to. I do not. The marker is glorious and divine. You... you know that. God knows in mysterious ways. Anyway, we'll have it on board tomorrow. You can analyze it all you want to. What are you so worried about? Worried? Captain, people are dying down there, killing each other. Is this madness the transformation unitology teaches us? Doctor. Terence. There will always be risk when the stakes are high. And here, they're enormous. It could change everything. And that's what worries me. Line gunshots are enough to take out this uh, first lurker. Which is, I believe, what the uh, what the baby type enemies are called. We'll go around here and we'll uh, start opening the door. And while the door is opening, we'll hit the floor with a stasis in order to stun the lurker that is directly behind us. Uh, the other lurker in the room will try to shoot us, but uh, we'll get out of there before it can. That thermite you picked up should be able to melt through the barricade. Use the sharp bag to ignite it. Hope I can hold this position. I can hear something big moving out there. We'll go ahead and stun both these guys and uh, hit them with a mine. Ammo drops are quite frequent. Medical Officer Nicole Brennan transmitting ship wide. We need more help. We don't have the resources to deal with this many cases. Nobody would tell us what's happening. These wounds. We are not equipped to deal with this. God. Get up to the table. Hold him. Not if you hold him down. Every corner. So we wanted to get that battery in there, then we're going to run past these two guys after stasising the first uh, necromorph in this room, and then we will sever the arm off of that last necromorph so that we can run in here. Chief Science Officer Dr. Kine reporting. The colony's problems concern me greatly. I have no doubt this they are one. somehow linked to the discovery of the Go into the elevator and the exact hit the switch. That connection is still unknown. Almost 40% of the colonists are experiencing a form of dementia. The obvious symptoms are acute depression, insomnia, and hallucination. Incidents of violence and even murder also indicate extreme paranoia. Dr. Mercer has advised that I bring some of the affected on board for study. Dr. Wellen, the planet site psychiatrist, has reported that his own analysis has been fruitless. I'm hesitant to rely on Dr. Mercer at this point, but I need his expertise. 
We need so this is our first encounter with an Infector and also with an Enhanced Necromorph. Infectors can create Enhanced Necromorphs. The Enhanced Necromorphs, you can tell which ones they are by the fact that they have uh, Codes received and they look darker skin Thank God. and like I'll a uh, sort of shell right now. around it. Head to the tram station and I'll contact you there. I'm going to find out what the hell happened to this ship. But basically, those guys will take uh, two mines or three mines in order to kill. We'll stasis these lurkers and just go through the door here. We'll stasis that guy too. Somehow, one of them found a way down to the captain's nest. I managed to contain it in a damaged escape pod. Lifting executive lockdown now. I found the deck logs. Whatever is happening around here, it came from the planet when they cracked it open. It spread to the colony and reached the ship. Isaac, this isn't an infection. It's some form of alien life. Shit, we've got bigger problems. The ship's engines are offline and our orbit is decaying. Get over to the engineering deck ASAP while I stay here and figure out what the problem is. So what I usually like to do whenever I'm at a store is I just sell all of my uh, semiconductors and all of my health items. And uh, I always sell down to one full pack of plasma energy just to make sure that I have enough ammo. In this particular store, I'm going to get the uh, level 2 suit so that I can carry more stuff. spend the rest of my credits on power nodes. But in general, early game, want to keep a, uh, want to try to keep around two packs of line gun ammo. I would say as long as you have two uh, sellable listings for line gun ammo, that is good enough. Sell the rest. Two problems, and we're working on borrowed time here. First, there's no fuel in the engines. Second, the gravity centrifuge is offline, which means there's a couple of trillion tons of rock pulling us down. I need you to get that centrifuge operational. Refuel the main engine and fire it up so I can stabilize the ship's orbit. My recommendation is to sever the limbs off of this corpse because an infector will turn it into an enhanced necromorph later. Personal log. Active It'll save you ammo and it will save you pain. It's been two days since they pulled that planet open, since the captain died. The panic, the riots, they were nothing compared with what came after. Our friends, our co-workers, started coming back. Changed, coming back to kill us, drag us away. Rucker disappeared this morning, and I have to assume he's dead. My crew, they're starting to crack. I'm trying to keep... What in hell is going on here? Don't grab that schematic in the corner, by the way, because if you grab that schematic in the corner, then the game will start spawning ammo for guns that you don't want ammo for. Oh, God. Is he dead? Relax. He's alive. But he hit that door pretty hard. Man! Why did you do something like that? Stun here, mine there. And then if you aim in a very specific spot, you can use Kinesis to pull that switch there without having to go up to that area. It'll prevent you from spawning more Necromorphs that you have to deal with. So all I had to do was just mine that one Necromorph and then I could take my time pulling that switch. And uh, while we are going across in this uh, gondola over here, 
if you look very carefully, there is a point where if you aim the plasma cutter, you can actually pull a switch. And you don't have to go through that whole area at all. You just completely skip it. And the best part of all is, it's not a glitch. It's called being efficient. There's that switch right over there. Just gotta make sure we press the switch again before the gondola is at its end. I have a fuel reading. It's only a quarter full, but that's enough to restore orbit once you bring the engines online. What the hell? False alarm. I thought I saw something. Gondola, gondola, I don't know what emphasis on what syllable that word is. I don't really care. So once we go up here, we're going to use the stasis. Just ignore all the boogers and ignore that guy. We have to hit the uh, necromorphism that's coming out there in order for the stasis to affect the boogers. And there's our infector, and because that other body does not have any limbs, he can't infect it. So just use, uh, just use two, three blind guns. Actually, it only takes two. I think in later chapters it might take three. But I just use three to be on the safe side because this game's hitboxes do not work sometimes. Yeah, I think I'm just going to talk We've over the audio log because it really doesn't give me a whole lot of opportunity to talk. centrifuge to balance the ship, the gravity tethers will pull us straight down to the colony. I'm heading in there now to see if I can fix it. I'll try to respect all of the unavoidable dialogue, though. Contamination sequence activated. Please stand by. If it's a deal breaker for you, there is always the no commentary version in the pinned comments below. Why I say it every video. We have to deal with three necromorphs in here. We're going to aim at this vent up here on the left next to the exit door. Leg, 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 arm, arm. Number two comes out of where we were just standing. If leg, 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 arm, arm doesn't kill it, get rid of its other arm. I was actually made aware that severing a single limb while a leaper is on a wall will actually kill it completely. Shoutouts to Helios Max. Decontamination sequence complete. Thank you for your patience. Before we proceed any further, we're going to head to the left. There's a power node and some credits. Fortunately, Necromorphs have pretty set HP most of the time. I would imagine if there was like a DA system in place like in Resident Evil 4, this game would be absolutely unbearable. I use a stasis recharge here, Entering just to be quick. Gravity. 
stasis before these gates come up and you can hit that one right there and do a quick stasis recharge and then you can just uh, drop down before the uh, vacuum kicks in and you're able to completely skip this whole centrifuge section. You're doing great Isaac. Centrifuge and gyros are both 100% and stabilized. Now get out of there and focus on the engine. I don't know how much time we have left. Necromorph on the way down. Isaac, can you hear me? It's Kendra. They attacked me. I ran for it, and Hammond just. He just disappeared. Kendra? Where are you? Nice to see you're alive and well, Hammond. I barricaded myself in the computer core. I can hear them moving outside, but I don't think they know I'm in here. I could launch into everything from here. I hacked the route and found some reports from the colony. Even before they came, the colonists were experiencing widespread dementia. It seems to be related to some artifact they found on the planet. Something called the Marker. I'll keep looking. I've got your location and I'm going to unlock the door to fuel storage. You can get to the engine chamber from there. Pack. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, chat, you couldn't hear me? That was really loud. myself and with all the other shit going on it's obvious this is sabotage i'm heading for the bridge and then i need to find elizabeth i gotta get her off this ship it's not safe Boogers over there. If we just uh, completely avoid that room and get on the elevator, we don't have to worry about them. 
Although we have enough plasma cutter rounds that we can just shoot them. There's a stasis recharge module. Always drop your least valuable item. We're gonna go ahead and trigger that guy. And uh, he's just going to stupidly run into the door. Go in here, grab the explosive barrel, and fire at that corner. Sometimes there might be a booger left alive, so be careful. Because again, water hitboxes in this game. room is a little bit of a pain in the ass. It is one of the quarantine type rooms. We'll just uh, launch a couple of mines over here. Actually, just one mine is enough. And it should get rid of these first two. It'll alert the second one, though. Just place a mine, let him run into it, maybe. Except when it doesn't work. Given how bad the hitboxes are in this game, that guy should have actually hit me. But I was able to stun him before he could. Once we take out those three, then... Uh, I actually don't know what that one is called before, what that one is called. I'll just call it the Pregnant Necromorphs. So that Pregnant Necromorph right there... That pregnant necromorph right there will uh, spawn from behind. As long as you don't attack the, uh, as long as you don't hit the abdomen, then boogers or lurkers will not spawn from it. Pick up this power node here. And uh, we'll get ready for the next wave, which spawns in after we hit the uh, after we hit the button on the engine over here. Oh wow! Twitch chat says that apparently they actually are called pregnant necromorphs. Spot on. trying to clear out all the enemies out of the way because I don't want my uh, kinesis module to get interrupted by stray body parts or something like that. Ignition sequence initiated. Please stand by. We can use these barrels to kill any of these necromorphs instantly. Watch out for uh, the female necromorphs right there, the ones in the uh, green suits. Because those can actually spit acid at you. After we kill about uh, five of these guys, just watch out. hit the button to power the engine and then we exit the room as quickly as we can. Firing. I don't have any more inventory space to pick up that uh, 
medium med pack there for an additional 2,000. We're online and functional. Finally, some good news. Get a transfer bridge, Isaac. I'm gonna take us back into a geo station. Wait, wait, we're not safe yet. The ship's asteroid defense system is offline. On the way up, the ship's going to pass through a debris field thrown up from the planet crack. We'll be ripped to pieces unless you restart it. God damn it. I'll start working on it from here. Isaac, meet me at the bridge. You can do more good here than I can. Isaac. Isaac. Where are you? It's me. Nicole. I like to pick up these extra pulse rounds, even though it's really not necessary. One more necromorph in between us and the train. Just shoot it out of the way. Kendra's right. The ADS is completely shot. I'll need your help to fix this. Kendra, if you can hear me, see if you can get into the ship's reports. It sounds like you have better access from there. When were you going to tell us about the artifact, Hammond? This marker? I don't know anything about that. It's referenced in the captain's records. They brought it up from the planet. It's on the ship? In cargo. They think it's of alien origin, but I don't know what the hell it is. Really? CEC didn't know anything about it. You're lying. Back up! I am not the bad guy here. We're all shaky right now. You're gonna have to trust that I don't know anything about it. <laughs> We've entered the debris field. Get to the captain's nest. I'll explain everything later. Come on down. careful about that window. The brute can damage you through it. In the store here, we're going to get rid of the med pack, the semiconductors. We're going to keep those stasis, well, move them into safe storage. Take ourselves down to one pack of plasma energy and three packs of line racks, same as usual. We're about to get the schematics for the level three suit. Warning. Hull breach detected. Isaac, impact on the bridge, right at your feet. I'm reading heavy damage, but containment looks solid. Life support is stabilized. We've got to get the ADS working. Breach, come in. We've been boarded. Repeat, the ship has been boarded. We are under attack. Open fire. How are they? They've already killed most of the deck staff. We need security back up here immediately. Guns are useless. We can't hold them back for very long. So it should be noted that as long as you keep your FPS at 200 or below, then nothing should break badly. I think the game breaks a little more if you try to lock your frame rate at 60. Isaac. Damn, you scared me. Place is really jumpy. Fucking asteroids coming through the roof. Look, I know Kendra doesn't trust me, but I don't know anything about a marker or anything else. This is supposed to be a repair mission. Plain and simple. This mess is the asteroid defense system. I can fix these boards, but the main power routing is shot. You're gonna have to reroute them manually through at least three junction boxes to activate the primary cannon. Oh, but first, you need to activate the atrium elevators from bridge security. You can use them to get to the junction boxes. By the way, Isaac, be careful. I saw something out there, I don't know what. I only got a glimpse. It was big, really big.
Shit! Stand back! Thought that one was dead when I sealed the pod. These things don't die easily. This is our first encounter with a Brute, and as long as the Brute is not turtling up, then it takes about uh, five mines to kill it, but it can take an upwards of seven. We gotta be careful to make sure that uh, we keep the Brute in stasis, which is why I used a stasis module to refill my stasis back to max. I think that the better thing to do might be to use the uh, might be to use the plasma pistol on the armpits so that we sever its uh, sever those arms. Quarantine lifted. Again, trying to sell ourselves down to a full plasma energy stack and move those uh, pulse rounds there as well. It's probably a good idea to carry another stasis module just in case. There's only uh, one area where you can recharge your stasis. Pick up the level 3 suit and then buy power nodes with our remaining credits. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to upgrade or apparently just go through the elevator, I don't know. The better thing to do is to upgrade the stasis module completely before going through this area. Kai, make them listen to reason. Settle down, then. Hold him. By Maritime Law, Article 5469, I hereby declare Captain Benjamin Mathias unfit for duty. The marker must be delivered to the church! Terence, please! I'm sorry, Ben, but I can't let you do this. Heretic! Hold his head. Murderer! Hold him! He's dead. No, it was an accident. I, I had to stop him. Arrest the doctor. Contact beam schematic right there. Very, very important. That's going to be what kills Brutes later. You can actually plant a mine without uh, waking up that Necromorph right there. And if you do that, then you don't have to stun it. You don't have to do anything. It'll just die. And then you have free access to the stasis. Looks like some of the gravity plating is malfunctioning. Keep an eye out for any kind of distortion effect coming from the floor. It could be dangerous. So, 
so here's something fun. While these guys are uh, in stasis like this, by the way, if you're stasising an enemy mid-attack, uh, don't try to do this, because for some reason, an enemy's active damage frames will still hit you while they're in stasis, and they will also cause, like, the full amount of damage. Like, you, like even though it's, like, the laws of physics should dictate that an enemy's attack should be completely depotentiated while it is completely slowed down. It still is able to hit you with full damage, which I thought was a really, really terrible design decision, but whatever. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is you can you can uh, you can use stasis on necromorphs and push them into these gravity springs right here, and then they'll just die, and it's pretty great. I'll do it again just so you guys can see it. Once we uh, cross this line over here, the Necromorph will uh, come out of the vent on the other side of that. And so we're just going to stand over here and wait. It'll be pretty quick. I mean, they're smart enough to avoid gravity springs most of the time, because sometimes they're just really dumb. So there we go. Tried to leap at us. Get eviscerated. Of course, you know, stasis isn't going to last long enough for us to be able to uh, do anything with these lurkers over here, so we're just going to use the old tried and true. Move this out of the way here. So we'll move this out of the way here. Recharge stasis, and we'll. Go over here. We'll uh, stasis this guy. We're just not even going to bother shooting him. Making some progress with the tracking grid. One of the cannons is giving me a hard time. Keep moving. The brute will not follow you into this area with the stasis recharge, so we can just run, recharge our stasis, and just go ahead and exit the area. We've already killed all the enemies here. I'm pretty sure, like, uh... I'm pretty sure, like, using the gravity springs to kill enemies would be a lot easier if you have, like, the force gun, which is actually meant to push enemies out of the way. Use stasis on these guys, and uh, once again, use the old tried and true. Before I go back up this elevator, I'm going to recharge my stasis. Out of the elevator here, we have to run directly towards uh, this other elevator on the other side of the column here. Definitely a much easier and safer thing to stun that particular leaper I've got over the med instead report. of whatever the fuck it was These that I did there. Recombinators. They take dead tissue, absorb it, and mold it into new forms. One iteration seems to have the sole purpose of infecting corpses. The others. 
Well, seem to be making corpses to infect. And that body tissue we keep seeing on the walls is part of it, too. I found a report that says it's a habitat changer. here there's uh, two enhanced necromorphs and a lurker before we do anything else though we're just going to go ahead and loot these two adjacent rooms here while the other two necromorphs are patrolling around because occasionally if we do this first one necromorph will just walk into the gravity spring like an idiot and kill itself as long as you don't aggro them and just leave them to their own devices sometimes necromorphs around gravity springs will do that so I just wanted to take my time on the off chance that that would happen. And uh Yeah, so this is a this is a weird thing that happened. He ran right across that gap, which I'm not even sure he was supposed to. Either way, he is gone. He is done. This guy is going to come over this way, and while he's completely unaggroed, we're going to stasis him, and we are going to do the same thing. Bye-bye. There's a corpse on the floor here that an, that an infector is going to turn into an enhanced necromorph. We're just going to ignore it. Yeah, see, that's 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 what I was talking about. That lurker just ran into that gravity spring. Otherwise, we would have just stunned him and uh, used a mine. Control system suction box rerouted. After we press that switch, yep, there's Almost the infector. There. It's infecting the corpse. We're just going to completely ignore it all and just clean. There is no reason for us to be in this room anymore. Now we're going to get a level three. Pregnant Necromorph and another uh, Necromorph that'll come out of the vent whenever we uh, cross a certain gap. Unfortunately, that mine uh, destroyed the abdomen, so a bunch of boogers just erupted from it. That booger didn't self-destruct, so we have to hit it with a uh, plasma right there. Enhanced Necromorph over here. Two mines. Actually, it takes three mines to kill an enhanced necromorph. Remember that. Asteroid defense system now online. All right, we've got enough power. 
But the ADS cannon's auto targeting is down. I think it's a faulty data cable. I need you to aim the cannon manually until I can replace it. Take the elevator to the top of the ship and head for the cannon pit. So this next zero G area, you have to kind of take it easy. Isaac, you're going to have to cross the ship exterior to reach the ADS cannon. Problem is, we're still getting bombarded by asteroids. Look for cover, or you'll get torn to pieces. Entering gravity. Entering zero gravity. What I'll do here is I'll just stay right by this oxygen recharge. Whenever you see the screen shake, stand behind one of these, and then wait for the uh, shaking to stop. Don't move until the next uh, phase when the asteroids come crashing down. I like to do a zero G jump over to this one over here, which may or may not be a little risky. Just move from cover to cover and you should be fine. But do it with zero G jumps from wall to wall is my recommendation. You'll have enough air, even at the uh, level one air tank, don't worry. Personally, I think it's not worth it to invest the power nodes in that. Once we are at the last third of this area, we can just leap directly to the door, and we'll be fine. The asteroids will stop affecting us after a certain point. Exiting zero gravity. Exiting vacuum. That's it, Isaac. You're in the pit. The cannon's a mass driver, so it should punch through anything flying at us. Keep an eye on the hull's integrity. Too many of those things get by, and we're dead. I think I've almost got the system repaired. Just buy me a little more time. I am going to tell you right now that trying to do this on a controller is a pain in the ass because the aiming in this game is so awkward. But uh, there is an achievement for finishing this area with your hull integrity over 55%, I think it is. I don't actually remember. Just one more minute, and it should be fully operational. I only count damage against Isaac directly in this game, so, or at least in this particular video. So even if a stray asteroid hit, I wasn't going to reset over it. I've almost got this thing fixed. Just a little bit longer. Because there's really no strategy to this, just try not to miss. And I can't really tell you how to not miss. Again. Head to the tram station, and I'll meet you there when I'm done. There is a Ruby semiconductor in here, which sells for 10k. You definitely want to pick that up. Now that there's no more asteroids in this area, we can just zero G jump directly back to where we came from. There's a couple of enemies around here to sort of pick up the slack. 
Hey, see you later. Hammond, you're not going to believe this. Oxygen levels are falling. Something's poisoning hydroponics air production, and whatever it is, it's filling the deck up with that organic stuff. We're not going to have any air to breathe soon. But if I understand these lab reports correctly, I think I can make a poison to destroy it. Head to medical. It should have everything you need. Will this never end? Isaac, get to medical and mix together whatever Kendra's come up with. I'm heading to hydroponics. If I can slow it down, that might keep us breathing long enough to fight it. So we encounter a new enemy here. Uh, there's this, uh, there's the skull. And all the stuff that's attached to it. They're actually a part of a larger enemy that we encounter later. But uh, just be careful. Just uh, listen out because these guys can actually migrate through the vents. I still heard it rummaging around, and I didn't want to go through that room on the off chance that it was ready to pounce at me. So I decided to plant a mine there. Yeah, literally John, Car John Carpenter is the thing. We didn't eliminate the leapers from uh, in the uh, central bridge area here earlier. I'm just gonna take this white arc over here and uh, just run. If we just take this. If we just take this path, we'll avoid them all. It's super easy. And we'll go to the store before we leave as well. I'm gonna pick up the contact beam. Go ahead and sell the med packs, the air cans, and sell ourselves down to one full pack of plasma energy. Three line racks. Sixteen nodes is good. Once we cross this line here, another necr necromorph will spawn in front of us. It's a female spitter variant, so kill her immediately. The spitter variants will spit acid at you, and they will hit you before you can react and dodge. The way necromorphs can just like track your movement is atrocious, so sometimes you absolutely have to shut them down before they can do anything. Isaac, I can smell the contaminated air from here. It's spreading faster than I expected. I'm trying to isolate it, but it's not going to buy us much time. We have to get that thing off this ship. The chemicals you need are in the chemistry lab. I'll hack the door for you when you get there. You can't stand in the way of God's plan. The natural order. Are you... Are you blind? Let the rest. Looks like someone has reprogrammed the door locks on this deck. And recently, too. I guess we're not alone here after all. Someone doesn't want you in this part of the ship. 
Because the lurkers will generally uh, stay around that particular corner of this hallway. I wanted to go ahead and sever those tentacles on the off chance that it was playing dead. I don't know if lurkers play dead or not. I was just being safe. So here's a trick, if you throw a mine and it uh, hits one of these wall guardians in the head then it'll detonate instantly and it will sever all of the tentacles. You need to sever all the tentacles in order to kill a wall guardian. So getting the correct shot placement is important. Once again, remember, mine's arc, so we gotta arc a mine over there in order to kill that lurker. And we'll use stasis so that we can run across this uh, moving platform over here. And we'll wait for the uh, platform to come back through. Do a quick stasis recharge after we uh, slow it down. Station. Once you get the chemicals, you're also going to need a DNA sample of the alien tissue. I'll search the records for what. Can't hold me here. Push on lock, Doctor Charles. I now have a live subject for my study. I'm eager to validate my tissue regeneration here. Initial restraint was problematic, but now the patient's resting comfortably. He trusts me. He puts his life in my hands. He knows his part in all of this. Understands what I'm doing. The forehead has been swapped clean and marked. What are you doing with that? And I'm now attempting to create a passage to insert the sample no, tissue no, into. No! What are you doing? Please remove the Your fight for a survival is admirable but pointless. Uh, and yet you keep on going. It almost makes me think that we have hope and species. Are we the only one who sees that we have died out a long time ago? We just haven't accepted it yet. Stop running. Stop your struggle. Our future, your future, the future of our race ends here. Allow me to introduce you to humanity's child, the children that will replace us. Our greatest creation. Blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Shut up. We have to wait for that animation to finish before we can stasis that guy. He was immune to stasis while he was coming out of the tube, as we saw. Don't pick up that schematic. The three mines will uh, take him out long enough for him to start regenerating. Basically, once this regeneration animation is triggered, we have to stun it again and wait for Kendra's dialogue before we can exit. It's just gonna keep regenerating. Get out of there, run! There's some boogers in that tube over there, so we're gonna use a mine. Repeat, come in, Isaac. Kendra, is anyone there? Challenge. Where the hell have you been? A breach hydroponics. It's bad down here. Really bad. Grab that. Aim for the corner. You got it, got it. The eyes are stinging. Must be seeing things. Be careful directly to the right. 
the regenerator is just stalking us around, trying to make us feel unsafe, whatever. Now you need to find a DNA sample of the growth. According to lab records, there's an inert sample stored in the ICU. A Dr. Mercer was apparently doing intensive research on it. I've been trying to contact Hammond, but all I'm getting is static. Isaac, you've got to hurry. So this segment over here is just a uh, dummy segment that I recorded so that I could get better prepared for the next segment. Basically the next segment requires an absurd amount of forward knowledge to know where the enemies are coming from and it is super super cheap, like artificial difficulty cheap. So I ran back over to the bench so that I could just go ahead and upgrade everything. I'm going to do what I should have done in the previous chapter and just go ahead and upgrade my stasis module completely. Upgrade the duration, upgrade the energy. It'll give us a free uh, stasis recharge if we need it. And then gonna upgrade capacity for the mines and upgrade the damage for the contact gun because the contact gun is going to basically allow us to kill brutes in like very, very few shots. The contact gun is really good against brutes and bosses. I'm gonna go to the store here and uh, go ahead and clear out inventory here. Take a couple of stasis packs just in case. So as I was saying, this uh, next encounter over here requires an absurd amount of forward knowledge and also we have to your wait a really, really long time me. and listen Holding to this guy talk. Your final breath, you claw your way along. You hold on to what was once your war. No, Dr. Mercer, now, you're not adding any atmosphere. You were just boring me to death. Be glad of the knowledge that your death I really, really wish that you would just kill me and get it over with. Can you hear it? It's coming. Say your prayers. If there is a single empathetic bone in your body, you'll just kill me so I don't have to fucking listen to you. The regenerator is in this room, and there are an absurd number of enemies, and we have to get rid of them all. Whenever you hear clanging in the vents, that is your cue to throw a mine. Fortunately, all of these are just uh, trash enemies that can be killed in one mine. We just have to be careful to not uh, get hit by our own mines, really. But they do spawn in. Uh, oftentimes a lot quicker than we can deal with them and they are all spitter they are all spitter variants too a lot of my resets in this section came from the fact that I kept getting spit on over and over again so you have to watch out for that shutting down the door protocol I bypass the lock go Guardian right there. We can just uh, blow it up. Hopefully you blow it up before it spews any trash out that you have to uh, eliminate with your plasma cutter. Chalice Mercer. This incident continues 
to respond well to my experiments. Its cellular fortitude, not to mention elasticity, is remarkable. Dr. Kine, I'm sure, would disapprove. But I do not anticipate that issue as the good doctor is busying himself with the marker. As if that matters now. He has also succumbed to the same dementia that afflicted the colony. Only yesterday he told me he had spoken to his wife. But Amelia Kine has been dead for some years. My subject grows restless. Patience. Your time is soon. Very soon. Isaac. Now you just need to this has gone far enough. Accept your part in the God's plan. Throw a mine over here to get rid of these uh, boogers. Life support system failure on medical. Who the hell was that? Isaac, he's decompressed the entire deck and I'm being locked out of those systems. All the air has been vented into space. You should be able to bring it back online from the security station, but you don't have much time. You need to have one stasis here to stun the pregnant necromorph so that you can run by. Actually, maybe like two stasis here. Nah, just one, actually. Just one is enough. You've got everything you need to make the poison. Now get back to the chemistry lab. What are you going to do? Do it fast. Can I be breathing? You're cutting out, Hammond. I'm gonna try to switch over. <sighs> Shit. I lost his signal. I'll continue scanning for his location. You have to get that compound mixed. I've got more intel on the atmosphere. A survivor's report says a massive creature entered the hydroponic deck from outside the ship. That's when the air quality began degrading. The survivor called it the Leviathan. Processing request. Please stand by. Final mixing complete. Please remove the capsule. Let's hope that poison works. Head back to the tram station and get up to hydroponics as fast as you can. Still no response from Hammond, so be careful. There's no telling how contaminated that deck is. I'm beginning to truly admire your spirit. Misplaced as it may be. I think... I think you should see the whole plan. You should not spurn the hive mind's offerings. You deserve to witness that at least. Perhaps now you would understand. The war that I've done must continue. Will continue. I, Dr. Charles Mercer, shall serve as the catalyst to the salvation of our species. Right, so while this guy is currently this boring us to death, we're just gonna make sure that we loot everything. I will spread their divine glory across the entire planet. I will leave you with my creation. Embrace the inevitable. After he is done speaking in metaphors, we'll stun him right here, and then we'll go to the door and we'll get rid of his ultimate creation. Which apparently you just need to press one button in order to kill. Treating cycle successful. Transporting patient. Let's just hope that's the last we see of that thing. I've managed to override Mercer's lockdown. There's a secondary tram station nearby and you can take it to hydroponics. Let's just hope there's enough time.
Hydroponics log, Dr. Elizabeth Cross reporting. I'm pleased to say that we're working close to maximum capacity at the present time. All flora is healthy and thriving, and food yield has created a surplus. I was going to pass the surplus... Watch out for the boogers in the toilet over here. ...has given a no-fly order. I want to note my opposition to that order. Everyone knows they're in trouble down there, and I don't see what denying them our surplus will achieve. itself in food storage crew that was on this deck I think they're what's poisoning the air they've been transformed I saw one of them bloated swollen they're like poison factories we need to take them out where we can still breathe <coughs> Hammond I thought you were dead you need to get to cleaner air you're not going to be able to help Isaac in your condition Isaac, I'm scanning the area now. He's right, there's something really big in food storage. But I can't get a good scan. Monitor readings are off the scale. Be careful. That's the door to food storage. But I can't override the integrity lockdown. You have to destroy the pods to bring the air quality up. Then you can go through and use the poison on the Leviathan. Once again, sell all the useless items. Get ourselves down to one pack of plasma energy. Go ahead and sell the contact energy. We don't need that much contact energy. And then pick up all the power nodes, and we are at exactly zero credits now. I suppose I should be glad that Ham's alive, but I still don't trust him. I think he's hiding something about the marker. There is a bench in that first door. Well, second door, actually. Second door. gonna upgrade the charge for the contact beam. Actually, the damage. We don't need to upgrade the charge. Recommended, but I decided to upgrade the, uh, the damage first because it'll make it so that you can sever the limbs off of a brute in one shot. Then doing a save here so I don't have to watch those cutscenes again if I fail the next room.
to the left here and pick up these two ammo pickups, and uh, we'll keep our uh, plasma cutter out for the time being. You can see that the enemies just spawned right in. We're going to use the uh, stasis module over here. And then once we get into this room, it's only uh, four plasma cutter shots in order to kill this uh, poison factory here. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to cheese these guys by going behind this glass. And for some reason, you know, what are hitboxes? Once again, you can see that the mine did not affect the enemy. Even though it was in the correct range to even be able to hit that enemy. Basically hiding behind this uh, this glass wall over here lowers the chances of the enemies actually rushing at us. They tend to uh, go a little slower whenever they're coming around corners for some reason. Because you can see they just did that over and over again. But every so often they actually will run. You have to be careful. And while the uh, while the high pitched string music is still going, it means we've still got aggro. It's probably going to be some enemies still outside. Once we've taken out these enemies. I think it's like right after we destroy the poison factory, this pregnant necromorph spawns. We're gonna try to sever the limbs. Yeah, that guy just like snuck right under me. Cause that's just what enemies do in this game. They just they just sneak. They sneak around. Pregnant Necromorph dropped a uh, large med pack, 5,000 credits. We'll go in here and we'll give it to this other poison factory. Once we get rid of the other poison factory, a Lurker and an Enhanced Necromorph will spawn in, so... We're going to let the Enhanced Necromorph uh, come out of the other room and into this one. We'll just get our uh, get our minds ready. Once we hear the uh, clanging in the vent, that is the best time to shoot. It takes three minds to kill them, as you know. Even with the level one upgrade, it takes uh, it takes three minds. In that particular situation, Omai Wamo Shindeiru. Replacing nutrient light. We'll stun that, uh. We'll stun that thing right there so that we can get that, uh, large health pack there. Easy money. Warning. Toxic detected. Active processing. A repair technician has been notified. Taking this ultra slow elevator up to level three so that we can loot this top floor up here. Probably not really worth it, but I did it anyway because there aren't any enemies around. My policy has been that if I'm not in any danger of ruining a setup because enemies are chasing me around, that I just pick up whatever loot I can and sell it. 
So it does make this particular no damage video a little longer than most that are already on YouTube, but for walkthrough purposes, this is reasonable. Oh yeah, another thing, if I haven't already mentioned it, the stasis hitboxes in this game are terrible. So just like, don't trust them. Isaac, make us whole again. I positioned the lasers on my uh, line gun there, the way that I do. So that I can get rid of the poison factory around the corner there and exit the room swiftly. Because an infector will come out of the vent. This is our first encounter with the, uh, with the exploding monkey variants. These guys just uh, hoard after you and uh, try to blow you up. If your kinesis is working correctly, then you can uh, you can sever their poison sacks and fire them back at them. Also, at higher frame rates in this game, the physics kind of bug out a little bit. So don't be surprised if you see something silly happen. Zero gravity. Zero gravity, we're just going to drag this to the right, and these two lurkers are going to spawn in, and once they hit the ground, we're just going to hit them with a mine. They're already dead. Now they're even more dead. One more lurker in here. We're gonna use stasis. And then blow him up with a barrel. Exiting zero gravity. Warning. Air filtration system still active. Entering the filtration tubes is extremely hazardous. Hello? Hello, security? Thank God. This is Dr. Croft in hydroponics. I'm trying to locate second engineer Jacob Temple. I can't get through to engineering. Of course I know there's a shipwide medical alert. That's why I'm trying to locate him. No, we're safe for now, but the tram is down and we can't reach the escape pod. Hello? Hello? <laughs> So we're going to destroy all these fuse boxes here. And uh, once we come into this uh, deactivated filtration tube right here, there's a... Uh, there's a regular necromorph that'll come out of the vent, come rushing towards us. An enhanced necromorph can rush through here and it will actually survive the filtration tube every so often. 
even though the filtration tube does full damage to it. But it actually got caught by the filtration system, so it got got. We'll just go ahead and take the elevator up and we'll destroy the poison factory on our way up. Power node over here. Drop these uh, med packs right here. Exit this elevator, we're just gonna head directly to the door on the left. Don't worry, no enemies are gonna come through these air vents. A lot of the jump scares in this game are all bark and no fight. About to get to use the uh, contact gun that I've been hyping up so much. You're gonna get to see precisely why it is good. Do the usual, sell all the junk items. Don't need that many stasis packs. I have a little too much contact energy here actually. I wanted some more nodes, though. We can literally just aim a couple of feet above that uh, above that one's head. Don't even bother using the mines here actually because sometimes the mines will actually uh, blow themselves up on the door. The door physics in this game have a weird quirk where if a door is closing then it registers as completely closed and Hey. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, that's 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 really annoying. Hey, hey, stay. Thank you. So, 
That's what the contact does. The contact beam. You use stasis and you attack the weak spots on its armpits. You just sever the arms with contact rays and it's dead. As long as you have one complete charge shot beam, which uh, charges really fast actually. Yeah, so some of these boxes actually have boogers hidden inside them. I don't know who had the gall to pack boogers in boxes. But uh, some boxes you actually do not want to stomp. I'm going to angle myself over here so that we can uh, shoot this poison factory from down here. That way we don't have to go up the elevator to the third floor because there's actually nothing worth looting up there. Replacing nutrient right. We'll stun this over here and then run around to the other side and there's another poison factory right here that we gotta kill. go to level two. Hydroponics log, Dr. Cross reporting. Something huge just slammed into the hole near food storage. It wasn't a rogue asteroid. I know what that sounds like, but it was big and heavy. I'll report again when I know more. So right about here, there's going to be another tentacle sequence, and uh, just kidding. By the way, on uh, all this gross stuff over here that impedes your movement, if you strafe left or right, you can actually move a little quicker. This is Temple. Acting Chief Engineer. I came down here to find Dr. Elizabeth Cross, but she's not here. In fact, I can't find anyone. Just more of this organic shit everywhere. Zero gravity. I'm going to check the mining deck. It's about the only place I haven't looked yet. This room has some very weird geometry, and it was actually really tough to figure out what spots that I could actually jump on. Gotta be careful where we jump over here because sometimes Isaac will move a little forward while he is coming out of his zero G jump and he'll get electrocuted to death. But we have to put that under stasis and then go in here. There's gonna be a couple of enemies in here. A couple of lurkers, you know what to do. There's no need for me to go into that room. The poison factory is right there. Except geometry. So I can't just use the plasma cutter. Really all I needed to do was plant like three mines, but... 
against my better judgment, I went in here. Even though I'm pretty sure in the speedrun for this game, you like absolutely do not. Because if you do, like I did, then you spawn these lurkers. It would have been a lot better for me to just toss a couple of mines to kill the poison factory. Because you use a lot less ammo and you also don't have to worry about those lurkers spawning in either. That's the last one, Isaac. There's a switch in atmosphere control to restart the oxygen recycling. Once the air's clean, you can get into food storage. Isaac, I've been reading these reports. The crew all began having mass hallucinations. And... Well, I just saw my brother on a security monitor. And that's just not possible. You know, by any stretch of the imagination, you should just be able to jump in through there, but nah, you can't. You're not allowed to. It's just so hard to find a place to actually zero-g jump to. This is actually exactly what I'm talking about. And you, like, can't do it unless you jump to exactly the right spot. As of this recording, I had not played Dead Space 2 or Dead Space 3 yet. Well, I played a little bit of Dead Space 2 between the time I finished this run and the time that uh, I started recording this commentary. And I will say that they actually fixed the uh, zero-G stuff by allowing you to jetpack around with zero-G, which is kind of nice. Because I thought that the zero-G puzzles in this game were terrible. And now that we've destroyed the last poison factory, we gotta make our way back to the main area so that we can go and fight the boss. And to do that, we just go back the way we came. Necromorph spawn here on the way back, and uh, we're just going to stun them all and use a mine to clear them all out. I decided to go back through here just to make sure that I collected absolutely everything even though there was really no reason for me to do that. Oh, wait, there, there, there actually was. I needed to recharge my stasis. If you pass by a stasis recharge station, it's always very good to recharge your stasis because it lessens the need to use a stasis pack later. Oh yeah, by the way, you probably noticed that I haven't opened any node doors. Node doors are really not worth it, aside from like maybe a few extra pieces of lore. Are you? Help me. You're better off doing that in New Game Plus. All air vents. Restoring nitrogen and oxygen levels. Food storage lockdown lifted. I'm not going to save yet. There's more cutscene that I have to go through. Hydroponics log, this is Dr. Cross. It's hard for me to believe what I'm seeing here. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm going to the mining deck. I hear that's where survivors are gathering. Jacob, I'll wait for you there. Damn it. The poison wasn't strong enough. I'm still alive. Get 
Get in there and kill it before it contaminates the entire ship. Once that door unlocks, we can actually go back and go to the save point before fighting the boss, fortunately. Thank god they allowed for that provision during beta testing. Because if I were testing this game, I would have gone mad. So when you see a worm retreat back into the main body, that means that that's the worm that's going to attack, so keep an eye on it. If you eliminate a worm from a hole, then another worm will pick up the slack. So really, you don't even really need to move all that much in this fight. Just keep your contact gun charged. Wait for the worms to come to you. The only thing that's really risky is the projectiles that the main mouth spits out. We're going to reload and then we're going to wait for... for... Once it starts spitting uh, orbs out, you can use Kinesis to throw it back. But uh, my recommendation is to just, uh, to just go around the outside wall dodging them that way. Once the tentacles come back, same deal. You don't have to worry about any projectiles, just, just, just stay put. Every time you get rid of a tentacle though, then you have to shoot the core. I think the uh, core might actually take like a fixed amount of damage or like a fixed maximum amount of damage. But I killed it in as few cycles as I could, so there you go. That is why contact bun... Contact bun? Isaac! You did it! Hammond, do you read? Oxygen levels are returning to normal. Damn it! He's gone again. No sign of his rig anywhere. It's up to us now. I've got a plan to get off this ship. I've located an SOS beacon on the mining deck. If you can get down there and activate it, we might be able to send a distress call. Oh god. I don't know how much longer that target will hold. That is why that is why contact gun is good. Once again, sell ourselves down to one maxed out plasma energy stack. Sell all of the junk items. And then we're gonna pick up the pulse rifle which is actually a gun that I should have picked up a very long time ago. Because the pulse rifle in the original game is actually really good. The catch is, you have to max it out first, though. Once again, I'm getting my doors confused. But you absolutely want to max out your damage nodes as much as you can. Probably better to do capacity first, but I went for reload first. 
even though it would have taken the same amount of nodes to upgrade capacity instead while going for that damage node. Enemies will still take a lot of ammo, but the DPS of the plasma gun, once you have upgraded the damage enough, is absolutely enough to be able to lay waste to large enemy mobs. I probably could have used this during uh, chapter five, the second trip through the uh, through the medical wing. The ammo is really cheap for the pulse rifle too. So it's like the only gun that I actually buy ammo for. Pretty much once you max out the uh, the pulse rifle and kinesis and uh, give a couple of damage levels to your contact gun and your line gun, you don't really need to upgrade anything else. You could just buy ammo and stasis packs after that. This may be our last chance of getting out of here alive, Isaac. There's an asteroid loaded up in the mining bay waiting to be smelted. If you attach the SOS beacon to it, you can launch it away from the ship to make a clean broadcast. The beacon's on the maintenance subdeck. You can launch the asteroid from the control room. Damn, the control room is locked. It looks like they keep an emergency access key on the processing subdeck. Couldn't be easy, could it? I don't know how much more of this I can take. We're gonna loot everything in here before we head on the elevator. Subject is offline for some reason, Isaac. I'll see if I can run a bypass. Okay, so we gotta run over to this control panel over here, and now you guys get to see the plasma rifle at work. The plasma rifle, on top of dealing a lot of direct damage to necromorphs, is able to also sever their limbs, so. You know, the way that the way that uh, the way that enemies work in Dead Space is they have a fixed amount of HP, so you can shoot an enemy to death. But the caveat is they take the vast majority of their damage from dismemberment, which causes like uh, critical damage. So some of the raw damage from the pulse rifle makes it so that you have to dismember them less. And of course, because of physics in this game, I was trying to uh, bump that corpse to see if I could get it to this is Temple. shut up. I found Elizabeth, but, but there isn't a single space-worthy vessel in the whole goddamn bay. Jacob, hurry up! We need to find a beacon. There's gotta be one around here somewhere.
once again, water hitboxes. Water collision boxes. A lot of the geometry in this game is pretty terrible. So I was trying to shoot that one from around the corner, and instead I was hitting an invisible wall. This game has a lot of invisible walls. So I was actually uh, made aware that severing limbs does work. Like, shooting limbs actually does work in Dead Space 1. I was saying that it didn't work. In that it doesn't instantly kill enemies, but it does allow you to instantly sever another enemy's limbs. Provided the limb that you shoot back at the enemy does accurately hit said limb. But it's really tough. Careful not to hit that abdomen. If a certain amount of damage is done to the abdomen, you'll actually see a very visible rip in the pregnant necromorph's abdomen, at which point, once you have completely depleted its HP, it will erupt, and either boogers or lurkers will shoot out of it. And then you have to deal with those two. So usually I like to wait until the end to deal with the pregnant necromorphs because I always have to take my time with those so that I don't waste any more ammo in the future. There's my next save point right there, but I'm not going to use it quite so soon. At the time of this recording, I was debating it. I was thinking about it, but I decided to push on. Whenever an enemy doesn't drop an item, I do like to make sure that it is not playing dead. Because an enemy will not drop an item unless it is for sure 100% dead. The other side of this wreckage is a node room. We can't pick up anything except for this uh, one piece of ammo right there. Power node and uh, spend the rest of our trash credits on some uh, pulse rifle ammo. Right about now is when I want to start carrying three stacks of line racks. Also took out the uh, the pulse rifle rounds that I was banking up. There's a failsafe on the processing control door. It won't open until gravity is restored. But you can't get on the gravity until those boulders are cleared from the room. Maybe you can dump them into that gravity beam with your teeth and gun. Yeah, once we put that first asteroid into the tractor beam, we have uh, we have a bunch of enemies spawn in. Basically, got to take care of this all really slowly. 
You have to be further up the wall before you can zero G jump over to the lower side of the wall, which is kind of dumb. That first mine that I shot didn't hit that one. So I decided to wait for it to unstun so that I could see what it would do. And it looked like it got stuck, but it didn't. And of course, what is a hitbox? For me, there were an awful lot of what is a hitbox moments in this chapter. The thing about this game, Dead Space, is it has a lot of good going for it. Thank you. I will readily admit that, but there are a lot of technical issues in this game related to the game's mechanics. That I was pretty unhappy with throughout the course of this playthrough. In case you haven't already picked up on that. But of course, my videos are not reviews. All three floating anomalies destroyed. Gravity can now be restored. So... My opinion about video games ultimately doesn't matter. If you like this game, good. Don't listen to me. My opinion does not matter, and it should not matter to you. I like to stun that one and then use the uh, use the uh, use the bomb on the sploder's arm in order to get rid of it so that we can uh, basically line these guys up. And it's less likely that uh, any of them will actually like come after us. I was, I almost ran into that mine like an idiot. Stasis. Exploder will absolutely kill any standard enemy in one shot. Just completely dismember them, so those they're really good for that. As you can see, no enemies vented in behind me. So coming in through here and just like taking care of them little by little is actually the best policy. Fortunately the range on the uh on the splody arms is actually not that great, but it does do more damage than a line gun mine, and it will kill Isaac in a single hit, especially on impossible mode, so I gotta be careful. After that big mob of enemies is gone, we can just uh, proceed into mineral processing. That room is absolutely terrible otherwise, because if you stay in that larger area, then you're going to get ganked by enemies as they come out of vents and stuff. In my last casual playthrough of this game, that room was really, really terrible. But if you do what I did, then you should have a much, much easier time. on the colonist dementia. It seemed to start after they removed the marker from the planet. God knows how long it was down there.
in here, just uh, clearing out some inventory space. One of more pulse rounds as well. Actually, it would seem that I decided to bank up a little more. Please recycle any unused materials regularly. Thank you. The next area is a direct RE4 ripoff auto scroller section. So it's another very good place to save the game. But I pretty much needed an entire segment for that whole uh, asteroid clearing section. Just because I couldn't find a consistent strategy for it. And I needed a whole segment to find that out. Once we're in here, there's going to be some infectors. We can uh, just go ahead and lay waste to them with the pulse rifle. Although the contact beam is actually a lot better for that. I didn't actually learn that until much later. Dr. Kai, what the hell are you doing? Ah, get back! From any close run, and I'll shoot him. Give me the access codes to the cargo bay. You idiot! This is processing! Why the hell would I have codes to cargo? Don't lie to me! I'm sick of everyone lying to me! It is imperative that I get the marker! Give me those codes! I don't have them! Is this what you did to the captain? Go on, shoot me if you've got the balls! Idiot! It's the only way to stop it! It's the only way to end it! He's completely lost it! Somebody call security! Unfortunately, during this auto scroller sequence, it's all these uh, it's all these little tentacle bitches that the wall guardians normally spit out. So as long as you know where they're going to spawn in, you can just shoot them, shoot off their tentacles before they hit you. You have very very little room to actually like dodge anything. So. Gotta be careful. You can see that I almost got shot like at least five times. By the way, also don't mistake the sound of them dying for the sound of them spawning in. The sound of them dying is a lot more ceremonious than the sound of them spawning in, which is just like a single like. Otherwise, when they die, they just explode. But, uh,. You know, you'd be you'd be fooled into thinking that the giant explosion is actually a big theatrical entrance or something for them, but it isn't. It's there to trick you into looking the other way because one sound is more Isaac? pronounced than the other. Is that really you? It feels like it's been so long, but I can help you now. Come with me. In this room, you pretty much have to be aware of where they're spawning in. I think I can disable the lock from here. Hold on! I like to get rid of all this uh, garbage over here. So that I can kinesis more efficiently. So listen for the pipe. Once you hear them, once you hear a singular clang through the pipe, that's when you pop off your mind. Because there is exactly enough time. Like that. It's a very, very subtle clanging that you can hear in the pipes. But once you hear that clanging, that's 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 when you launch your mine. Okay. 
The fourth enemy that pops up, we can just uh, shoot him off the rail. The next enemy, we have to stasis. Another enemy is going to come out of the floor, and then there's going to be a lurker on the wall in a second as well. This guy jumped off the railing, unfortunately. And that's what we have our barrel for, is to destroy that lurker. So we take out that last one with our pulse rifle. Ew, gross. Okay, the door's unlocked, Isaac. I can't get over to you, but I'll find a way. I love you. This will all be yours. Getting rid of these small med packs here, so that we can pick up more fat loots in here. Power node. Line racks. Isaac. Hey, I lost your signal for a while. You had and also worry. the schematics for the level 4 suit. I see you've got the beacon, so head for the mining bay and attach it to the asteroid. I've been running trajectory calculations, and if we launch soon, there's a good chance the asteroid can reach a safe distance to begin transmitting. Still no sign of Hammond. Use the plasma cutter and uh, use the mine, or the, the, the explosive barrels. After these first two, a lurker is going to pop in. We use an explosive barrel on that one. Then we're going to pull this uh, next barrel over here. There's another lurker going to jump on the bridge over here. There he goes. Lamb. Then another tentacle bitch will pop in. Right up against that lurker. We shoot that one down. Another one pops in there. Shoot that one down. There's our last lurker right there. Splatinum. We'll take this one over here, and there's going to be two more enhanced necromorphs that are going to pop in. Were they enhanced necromorphs or regular necromorphs? I think they were regular necromorphs, actually. I'm doing the commentary in post. means that I record the gameplay first, then I do the commentary, so sometimes I don't remember things accurately. Safety gear must be worn at all times in Class A environments. At which point I immediately correct myself because I like to do my commentaries in one take. Just like to keep it organic. Drop this medium med pack here. Or actually, drop that, drop those line gun racks right there because the semiconductors there are going to be better money for us. I've got elevator access to the mining sub deck. It was a security lockdown, although I don't think it helped them. Now that you've got the beacon and the key, head over there. It looks like the asteroid is held in place by some gravity tethers. You have to knock those out before you can launch it. So here's one such area that I was talking about. Mines do not affect the lurkers in this room, and there's literally no reason for this to happen. It's just unreasonably buggy. Here, watch this. I plant another mine right in between these lurkers, and it didn't even work. It didn't even affect them. I'll throw another mine so you can see that it does not affect them in this area. I have no idea. Okay, it actually did affect them that time, or at least it affected one of them. But for some reason, this passed QA. I have no idea how this passed QA. How in the hell does something like this pass quality assurance? I really hope they fix this in the remake. Or at least 
like, if the remake is completely different from the original game, we don't see anything like that happen anymore. But that's exactly what I was talking about by technical issues related to mechanics in this game. Is you have just invisible walls for like no reason at all that prevent you from actually being able to shoot enemies. Even though you could see, I shot three mines at those lurkers and it should have affected them. It didn't. But does anyone ever listen to me? No. They just say mad because bad. Processing log. Supervisor Second Engineer Dallas reporting. This will be my last report. I have seen what they do to the bodies. What they become. I can't let that happen to me. At least if I don't have any limbs, I won't be able to kill anyone when I'm infected. Please tell Don, and the kids, that I love them. Oh, God! One more. One more. So once we pull this battery, more enemies will spawn in. And, uh... What the hell are you doing? Stay! Thank you. Once we've collected everything down here, I'm gonna go back and save the game.
our suit. Got a lot of nodes here. Really want that last damage node. So here I do be counting them out. Since I can't really get anything else, might as well just go ahead and upgrade my capacity, right? Jump scare in three, two... <clears throat> Jump scare in three, two, one. Stasis and uh, shooting one of the cores on these uh, on these tractor beams will destroy it immediately. You have infinite stasis here, so you can just keep going back and getting more. You know, you can just take this whole area really easy. Once we uh, destroy one of the stasis units, though, or one of the uh, one of the tractor beams over here, then some leapers will spawn in. The line gun is probably the best gun to use here. I'm just looking around for the leapers. I decided to jump down to the floor so that I wouldn't uh, disorient myself trying to look for them. I like having a good point of reference whenever I have to, whenever I have to improvise like this. Excuse me, I almost coughed. These guys take two mines each. And then there's going to be an additional one as well that you might have heard come out of the vent while these other two guys were dying. Exiting zero gravity. I'm pretty sure there were three in this room, right? Entering zero gravity. Either way, I'm gonna zero G jump over here. We're gonna jump over here. Stasis, bang. There's uh, two lurkers right here. Hey, 
payload 8772 is no longer tethered. Untrained personnel should leave the area immediately. And then we're gonna exit exactly the same way we came. You can cancel this animation here by entering and exiting the menu if you want. Exiting. Just be really careful on the way out because you will die in one shot if those whatever they are shift around and hit you. Exiting zero gravity. Another enemy coming around the corner here. I think we have to take the battery back to where we got it. did that uh, sequence sequence with that uh, in ten minutes with that big asteroid there we have to worry about uh, flames coming from those turbines or whatever they are now we're gonna take this elevator up watch out there's a couple of boogers that are gonna come around the corner over here so get the pulse rifle ready bang bang Precisely two boogers, but they'll still get you off guard. It's really annoying. Payload 8772 launched. Beacon's on its way. All functions normal and broadcasting wideband. Now we just have to hope somebody's listening. I'll position the array receiver. I thought I saw my brother again. He waved to me like nothing was wrong. Okay, I should be able to leave this channel open. What? The comms array receiver isn't responding. Isaac, can you get back to the bridge? We need that array online or we can't receive signals from anyone responding to the beacon. Our first enemy is gonna pop out here to the right. Stun, fire, second enemy. Also a standard Necromorph, stun, fire. And we're gonna switch to the Pulse Rifle here because these next two are going to group very quick, very closely. So we can't use a, uh, we can't use a mine setup in order to kill them. It takes like way too many mines to kill these guys anyway. So I think for the Enhanced Necromorphs, it's just better to just uh, tear them apart with the Pulse Rifle. And they dead. There's uh, more of these disembodied arms and the head over here. We're just going to ignore them and just go directly in through the center of the door. Don't go to the left side of the door, not the right side of the door. Just run directly in front. Always straight, never left nor right.
Shoutouts to Bob Page. I did all of Chapter 8 in one Things take. Things are looking up. A military ship just shocked in. The USM Valor. I don't know what it was doing out there. It must have gotten our distress signal. We can't talk to it until the comms array is fixed. I'm gonna hack the door to communications for you. Get in there and find the comms control station. There's more loot that we can pick up because these boxes were locked before. We use the pulse rifle to get rid of these sploters over here. We stay on this side of the stay on this side of the room because they're all coming from the right. A couple will come from uh, the left, spawning in past these uh, visual thingies over here. Weird-looking holographic screens. So from this angle, you have a very good view of all of them. And then the enhanced necromorphs will pop in. And of course, like I said before, enhanced necromorphs are definitely a lot easier to take on when you have the pulse rifle. Finally, with this uh, leaper over here, we're just going to use the old tried and true. Now we can feel free to loot the rest of the room. more nodes so that I could uh, get some more damage out of the plasma or after the blah, 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 pulse rifle. So I decided to sell some stasis because I had way too much stasis. By the time I was done with this playthrough I had too many stasis packs. But it's better to have too many than too few. Rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So it's a good rule of thumb to always be carrying at least a couple of stasis packs. And with that, the pulse rifle is fully upgraded. is open, but I've been getting some weird feedback spikes from the local comms. I think someone's listening in on us, so be careful. Once we come in here... There's going to be uh, two more wall guardians. As you can see, I tried to arc one up 
try and destroy their uh, tentacles. So if you don't uh, get the instant detonation, sometimes it takes like just three regular wall mines in order to kill them, but if it doesn't, then yeah, you gotta sever the rest of the tentacles. It was really tough finding the angle, I, ju I just couldn't find it for this one. Same with this guy. It's an imperfect art, getting the instant detonation. Oh yeah, that's what happens when you right-click the pulse rifle, it's like a weird little fuck everything button. I had to get rid of these guys because there was just too many of them. guys are done. We're going to finally encounter the uh, monster that the that the disembodied heads and hands were attached to. These guys are not worth fighting most of the time because they just take a lot of time to kill. So we're just going to stasis and run by. First comms operator Bailey reporting. This ship is under attack, but request to issue a distress call have been repeatedly denied by Captain Matthias. He won't say it, but everyone on the bridge knows why. This is an illegal operation in a prohibited system. We've all known for months, and we kept our mouths shut. Not anymore. Mayday! 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 This is USG Ishimura! This is... What the hell? I don't believe this. The whole comms system is offline. Now he's gone too far. Bailey out. Communications array offline. A service technician has been notified. That comms array is in bad shape. We need at least six working dishes for a strong enough signal. Make sure they're aligned symmetrically so there are no power gaps. So there's power nodes here. A lot of other goodies. Entering zero gravity. Watch out for the uh, body parts of any others that you killed, because they'll just eat the stasis. Once all three of them are dead, now we can proceed to do the puzzle. We just have to make sure that uh, there is one blue dish in every uh, in every section six blue dishes in the room and we just have to organize them so that they're all on the same tier. I like to put them all on the middle tier.
Hey, where are you going? Get back here. as you can see, even though we have one dish in each of the six sections, they won't activate unless they are aligned correctly. So if you stick them all in the middle tier, you're good. Communications realigned. Messages can now be received. That's it. It's working. Get back to communications and use the control panel to send our coordinates to the Valor. This is USM Valor, wide casting on all frequencies to USGE Shimura in response to your SOS. We picked up your escape pod, number 47, and are en route to your position. This message will repeat every 30 seconds until you respond. What? Isn't that the escape pod Hammond jettisoned? What are those things was on board? No. No, this isn't going to happen. USM Valor. Come in, Valor. Our signal isn't strong enough. I'm going to open the blast door and decrease the signal. One enemy over here. We're just gonna go ahead and shoot him to death. There's something big on the hull of the ship, directly above the comms array. Something organic. I don't know what it is, and I don't care. We have to get the doors open to transmit to the Valor. You should have a clear shot from ADS Cannon 48. Get to the cannon and blow it out into space. Use these uh, next two nodes that we picked up to upgrade the contact beam a little bit, or really anything. Damage and upgrading cap on the line gun is not a bad idea either. Here's the thing that I like to do for this divider. I, I like to uh, lure it into the room that we're just in. Watch this. Stasis. And as long as we don't open this door again, this door will shut. I tried to get the door to close itself, but he was in proximity. So we have to get out of here before he uh, before he resumes time. But basically, if you go up this elevator, then the door will close and he'll be trapped in there forever unless you open that door. I don't know that dividers can go through vents or not. I won't count damage in this section because I think damage here is absurdly difficult, if not impossible, to avoid. Probably is possible. We'll just say no damage to Isaac in this run. Okay, 
see because of how erratically the tentacles move, it's like trying to get a beat on them in order to stun them so that they don't gank out debris and throw it at you. It's like you can mitigate damage, but typically while you're shooting another, uh, while you're trying to shoot another tentacle, there's not really much you can do. About the only way that I could probably see uh, being able to avoid damage here overall is to like probably just plot out exactly which tentacles you shoot in what order. Nine, nobody got time for that. Ishimura, come in. Do not open the escape pod. USM Valens, Tender Daniels on the USG. Ishimura, come in. Do not open the escape pod. Damn it! Respond! Why did they open the pod? Damn it. Oh my god. It's headed right for us. Isaac! Isaac! Fuck out there! Wish I could just talk to someone. It's all falling apart here. I <coughs> Isaac! Isaac, are you there? Thank God you're all right. I've been trying to reach you. Someone's been blocking my rig signal remotely. <coughs> A crash must have interrupted the signal block. Hammond, where have you been? <coughs> Surviving. Barely. I found some med supplies and packed myself up. Listen. I'm calling aboard on the mission. Fuck the CEC and fuck the chain of command. We have to get the hell out of here. I think I've located a shuttle on the crew deck. The flight log says it needs a new singularity core, but we can probably salvage one from the Valor. I can see the tail end of it sticking out from the side of the Ishimura. I'm headed down there now to find a way inside. I'll meet you there. Hammond out. Isaac, if what he says is true about the shuttle, we might have a chance of getting out of here. Head to the cargo bay and see if you can help Hammond. In his condition, he may not last long. over here. Stasis.
Good, you made it inside. Listen, I just found the munitions log for the Valor. I don't think their presence here is a coincidence. They're not on reconnaissance, and they're not on patrol. This ship is prepped for war. They're on a seek and destroy mission. Do you hear me? Isaac, I've lost him again. No signal from Hammond's rig. Find the Singularity core and get the hell out of there. Entering zero gravity. Isaac, one of the Valor's weapons ripped open in the crash. Those green orbs you see are highly radioactive, and the Valor's airlock has sealed itself. You're going to have to throw those into space before you can get into the ship. Right, so we stand here and we start uh, throwing these uh, green balls out of the space. After we throw the third ball, a leaper will spawn on this platform we're standing on, exactly like... to spawn right there that time. Sometimes it just spawns in the middle of this platform, but I guess that leaper just decided to come from over there. Radioactive material removed. There are six balls in total. Radiation hazard clear. Safety lock released. will be in the engine room at the back of the ship. I'm reading massive damage, so you may need to find an alternate route to get there. The infection process is doing something strange to these soldiers. They all have built-in stasis units in their body armor. The infection is merging the stasis unit into their flesh or something, making them move fast, real fast. Be careful. Right. So, just stand right here and uh, let them come to you. ammo right there. Worth picking up. And once we cross this line over here, another one will come out of the vent. And if you shoot it in exactly the right spot, then it will keep propelling itself to the right because of hit stun. I have no idea exactly how that mechanic works. All I know is that is the second time that I was able to do that, and I am glad that I caught that on video. it is really funny when it works. Isaac, I'm tracking your position, but it doesn't look like I can reach you. This damn ship was nearly shared in half. I made it to the bridge. It's a mess here. These poor bastards didn't stand a chance. I'm going to override all door locks so you can get to get to them. I'll try and catch up with you there. So it was right about here that I discovered that the contact gun was the best thing to use against the, uh, against the infectors. As you can see, it destroys them in one Listen, shot. I need to speak with you. My name is Terence Kine, Dr. Kine. Listen to me. There isn't much time. 
If you really can repair the shuttle, there is a better use for it than just running away. You must understand, the forces at work here are greater than you can imagine. If you leave now, you condemn all humanity. The planet will never stop, never rest, unless the marker is returned. Don't you see? The church is wrong. This is all a trap. I've seen it. Please, you must help me. So here's a little trick that I found for this room. If you stun here, you can run over to the uh, shooting range we have on and then immediately activate it and you'll have infinite ammo for a period of time. And as long as you don't cross a certain line, you can actually just wax these guys. But uh, because we've come in here, the enemies actually do go to a different starting point until the time runs out for the shooting range. But if you cross a certain line, then uh, you no longer have infinite ammo. Which is fine. If you blow up a uh, if you blow up an exploder right next to the dividers, then the limbs of the dividers will not come back to life. So it's a quick and easy way to get rid of dividers. As for the shooting range, I don't really have any tips for the shooting range. Just uh, point and shoot. You can't adjust your sensitivity on controller, so it's extra annoying. But I would say train your reaction to as the thing is coming up. Look low. If you complete all of this, you get an achievement for probably like not very much gamer score at all. But you get a power node, which is a worthwhile reason to go for all this, and you get as many tries as you want. So it shouldn't take you any more than like... 15 minutes to get it all. Just use the pulse rifle. I don't know if you can actually use stasis on these or not.
upgrade the charge on the line beam. Contact beam. I keep getting the names of these guns mixed up, I'm sorry. So I keep picking up the same health pack that I dropped when I really, really want those stasis packs instead. In case you're wondering, there are not enough power nodes to upgrade everything. You just end up upgrading everything in New Game Plus. stun this guy until the laser comes back around and kills him. Save a little bit of ammo that way. Wait for the laser to turn to the right and hit it with stasis and then go. We are not coming back through here. Then we'll go directly to the right over here. There is a power node in the cabinet to the left. Got a bunch of enemies. You know what to do. At this point, I pretty much just use the pulse rifle as like my main weapon throughout the rest of the game. I'll still occasionally use the line gun if the setup is correct. Where like, if there's three level one enemies, like if there's three standard necromorphs or something like that and I happen to get them all under stasis, then I just capitalize on the opportunity and use a line gun shot immediately. Otherwise, I like the idea of using the pulse rifle a lot better. This next room is pretty difficult, so it warrants a save. back into this corner, then for some reason the AI on that, uh, on that pregnant necromorph over there deactivates, but you can still damage it. The pulse rifle is exactly enough DPS and exactly enough stun for you to be able to uh, take down most enemies before they come in. Most of them are level 1 enemies, fortunately, so some are good for line gun shots, but like the uh, like the lurkers over here, maybe I would have used line gun against those. But given the number of enemies here, it was just a better idea overall to just keep the line gun out and keep shooting. Because I could have done enough hit stun to be able to juggle between targets if I needed to. over here. Fortunately, don't seem to uh, do too terribly much. I used stasis, but it didn't hit that guy, and it should have. Again, what is a hitbox? Oh! 
lockdown lifted. You stand right there and keep shooting. It's good enough. After that, we can loot the rest of the room. There's a lot of goodies in here that we can sell for more power nodes or whatever we want. But I would say from chapter 9 onward is probably a good time to start just uh, selling things to buy pulse rounds instead. Sell down to one stack of plasma energy, sell down to three stacks of contact energy, sell down to three stacks of line racks. And I am completely out of pulse ammo here. So just mash that by. Not before we scoop up everything else here. Watch out for that gravity spring, by the way. It looks like you can squeeze in between the gravity spring and that pillar, but you actually cannot. Don't try. a lot more pulse rounds than that. Coming across a pretty uh, jank and pretty obnoxious puzzle here. It is very easy to fail this puzzle just because the physics of the game decided to jolt the uh, moving cover that you have to use a little to the right or a little to the left and you just get burned to death. We'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I'm busy looting all this crap over here. But there is a uh, there is a simplified way to take all this to take care of all this though. I think a lot of people tend to move these things backwards, but you should never move them backwards. Just move them forwards, like so. Just try to keep Isaac exactly in the center. If you move your mouse, then it'll deviate to the right or the left. So that means if you tilt your control stick, your right stick, while you're moving that around, it'll deviate from the right to the left just a little bit. And if that happens, then you'll probably get uh, hit by the flame, so don't do that. Once that's done, we're going to wait for the flames to stop. We're going to wait for the flames to turn off, and that gives us a window to just run right back over here. We'll do the same thing with the second one. Once we take out all of these uh, fuses over here, then we don't have to worry about getting burned anymore. will shut off. Now we can grab the Singularity Core. Power building. 
Is that it? You got it? Oh my god! You got it! That's the piece we need. Get to the crew deck. love when the subtitles spoil exactly what's about to happen in the next 10 seconds. Either way, we're fighting an enhanced brute. And uh, all we have to do is uh, use stasis and use four contact beams in order to kill it. Drop down, listen. I just lost all of Hammond's vitals. Is he dead? Oh, God. That's just us now, Isaac. Blow off its arms. And it's done. Warning, catastrophic failure of fuel contained. Evacuate the vessel immediately. Warning, catastrophic failure of fuel contained. Evacuate the vessel immediately. one enemy between you and the tram. Come on, it's not like we haven't seen this like five times already. located the shuttle Hammond found. <sighs> Shit. No good. That shuttle's brain dead. Someone removed the navigation cards. God knows why. There's three of them scattered around the deck. I'm downloading their locations. I can't access the doors from here, so you'll need a crew key. If you can find those parts, I think we can get that shuttle operational again. mostly just going to be a dummy segment to get rid of a bunch of dialogue. Because we have to listen to this fucking guy run his mouth again. What do you cling to when all must seem so utterly hopeless around you? Dr. Cross was a true. She had faith. And now she awaits her transformation. A rebirth. Are you ready to ascend, Mr. Temple? Of course you are. Have no fear. You will play your part soon enough. Witness the conviction of a true believer! Uh. 
Temple and Cross would live. Let's be real here. I think out of all the characters, Temple and Cross were like the only ones that I kind of hoped would live. And of course, we have to wait until what's his dicks despawns before we can even leave the area. false alarm. Just pitch up the music for an enemy that isn't there. But this is another reason why I wanted to just like use one whole segment in this to just like sort of get through like the intros to each area. I wanted the level 5 suit. And also this section is like impossible to fail. So I just wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way. I pressed the wrong button. I tend to get the controls confused a lot in this game. Although, you know, I actually could have used... I actually could have just gotten it with the tractor beam, couldn't I? There's no reason for me to use zero G jump. I could have just gotten it with the kinesis. Enhanced Necromorph jump scare from the other room. Big yawn. He's dead. Then once we come back out here, there's going to be a uh, an infector coming out of the vent over here. So we use the contact beam in here. Two contact beam shots in order to take that one out. Here's our final suit upgrade. down to one stack of plasma, three stacks of line, as per usual, for three stacks of contact energy and some additional ones in case we need it, which we actually don't. I'd say keeping like three full stacks of contact energy at all times is, is, a, is actually a very good uh, practice.
the door ahead of this area is locked, but I decided to just start this segment out by getting rid of all of the uh, tentacle bitches over here. Also, an enhanced necromorph will pop out of the vent while you're in the middle of trying to take out the, uh, the wall guardian and the tentacle bitches. Contact energy spawns there, you can't pick it up for some reason. I tried a bunch of different angles in order to be able to hit it with the Kinesis, but there is no way that you can pick it up. Really, really bizarre that nobody caught that. Skirts of this area move counterclockwise around the room. One divider is going to pop up behind us whenever we try to pick up that power node. We're just going to stun both of them. We got the power node, we got the key card that we need. Now we can just take the elevator. They're not going to follow us. Mr. Clark, I really must speak with you. I'm very close to your position, and, and I know you want to hear what I have to say. I can explain all this. But what happened? When you have the nav cards, I'll let you into the security station. We must talk. Hurry. stasis recharge here because there's only one stasis recharge station in the whole level and it's not until the end in the whole chapter I mean not level once we pop this open the life support system in sleep lock B has been shut down you'll have to find an override nearby to get to the door we'll open this door back here Use the contact beam or the uh, or the pulse rifle. To this area over here, all we have to do is just uh, make sure that we stasis these two enemies over here, and then on the way out, we have uh, these uh, really, really speedy guys, the stasis necromorphs, 
to stun on the way out. And then we just exit the way we came, essentially. Exiting vacuum. Perpetual motion, don't stop. You're on a timer. Definitely a lot easier than fighting them all, I guarantee you. go through this door, uh, there's only a few enemies here that we actually have to worry about, so just, like, don't even, don't even, like, try to rush this. Just a bit, little bit of pulse rifle to kill those guys, and then there's gonna be, uh, divider limbs here as well. Sometimes by shooting the head, you actually kill the other limbs, but... Sometimes the limbs will actually, like, continue to stay alive. I'm not sure why that is. But there's a very rare occasion where if you shoot the head, then the limbs will actually die as well. Now that we got the uh, nav card, and the key card from up there. We can grab the last nav card behind this area right here. It's not a tragedy. It's God, the truth is even more fantastic. On the planet below us, we have found a fortune. God's plan is unfolding and we are its inheritors. We will ascend as we always knew we would. Unitology is truth. And your death is the first phase. We deterred by the physical methods of transformation. Soon, you will be beyond any physical concerns. You must have faith, fools. This is what we have been searching for all these years. This is what we have been waiting for. Don't listen to them. Come back. Come back. How can you be turning away from the church in this vital hour? Do not abandon your faith. What's happening on the colony is not a tragedy. It's God, this truth is even more fantastic. On the planet below us, we have found a marker. God's plan is unfolding and we are its inheritors. We will ascend as we always knew we would. Drag this to the right, drag it back. Pick up this ruby semiconductor. Drag these two over this way. Drag that one to the right. Uh, ma'am, excuse me. Uh, are you okay? Whoa, 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 don't do it! This time, there will be no escape for you, my friend. You have been most resourceful up until now, but my creation is free. Free flow is the fierce of life itself. So after we've grabbed that, we're just going to uh, pop a quick stun over there, and then we are going to drag these two back. We are completely safe in this particular spot right here. 
we're going to drag these two and make an opening right here. The regenerator is going to come in. We're going to enter. Well, first, we're going to stun him. We're going to enter this room, trigger this dialogue with Kendra. And we're going to come back, and we're going to drag these back in place because it is a timed event. No enemies can come into this area. We are completely safe as long as we just sit here. We'll just wait for Kendra to start talking. There's no vents above us. There's no way that any enemies can move any of these uh, bunks. Just be big chillin', just be big chillin', it's all good. We can shift the bunks a little bit though and uh, lob some uh, line gun rounds here in order to cheese these guys. Just be mindful of the back blast. Gotta wait for Kendra. Generator is respawning its limbs. We're going to just go ahead and uh, use stasis. And use stasis to stun any enemies that will be directly in the way. Especially those lurkers right there because they can just like jump onto you and interrupt any action that you try. Come and meet me. Because grab animations. The door is unlocked. Be quick. I think be careful with Dr. Kine. A lot of what I've discovered so far has come from his records. The man has clearly gone insane. He might be unstable, maybe even violent. It's just a bunch of dialogue at the end of this segment here. Responsibility for this tragedy. Now, I must take responsibility for ending it and atone for my sins. But you can help me. If you repair the shuttle and bring the marker back on board, we can end this forever. Thank you. 
On my way. After we put the nav cards in, we're going to collect all of the ammunition here. And then we will fire off the boosters. But before that, we're going to put that table there because we can actually use it to knock over the uh, regenerator. Watch this. Nice heavy object, throw him over. Keep stunning him backwards. Don't use stasis here because it'll actually make this a lot harder. We want to use stasis on these guys while they're here, for sure. I popped a stasis over there because I wasn't sure where that guy was. But once they're all three of them are stasis, run back in, hit the boosters, and they're dead. During this dialogue, more enemies can respawn, so be ready for them. Just watch out for the vent. The vent is to the left. It works. Don't even bother with picking up ammo anymore because we can I'm just buy the rest of it. Deck. Meet me there and we can load the marker on board. Yes, Amelia. Soon we'll take it home. I don't know if kind is crazy or not, but we need that shuttle. Let's keep him on our side. For now. Pop stasis on our way out. Your time has come. No need to be frightened. No reason for a bunch of flies. Many have gone before us, and now it's time for us to take the voyage together. Transcend death. The future take its course. For a bunch of uh, Join large and in charge type characters, the they are pretty fast. Out of here and head to the tram because it's all over. Well, okay, it actually will take two seconds to uh, do a little bit of shopping here while things are uh, nice and quiet. If it means less segment resets later. Max 
out inventory space on pulse rounds. Trust me on this one. a few more stasis packs if you feel the need to. Really at this point the plasma cutter is only good for taking out the tentacle bitches that the wall masters spit out. Wall guardians, excuse me. Approaching the shuttle hangar, you must, you must find your way to the cargo bay. The marker, it's being stored in there. There's a cargo loading lift there you can use to deliver the marker up to the hangar. Please, you must help me with this. It's the only way. I'm going to show you guys a super easy way to do this section. First, we're going to get rid of these uh, two enemies right here. There's only two enemies in here so far. A exploder and a pregnant. The pregnant does contain two lurkers if you sever its abdomen, so be careful. Sever a leg in both arms before the pregnant actually dies. Press that. We're gonna loot these uh, lockers over here and we're gonna run like hell across the bridge because if we take our time, then tentacles are gonna pop up and they're gonna block our way. See, here's the thing about Kinesis is Kinesis is faster when you are pulling objects towards you, but when you are trying to move an object with you, it is slower. Blow these guys up here. Keep dragging. Keep dragging. Plus they get up on our get up on our jock. Stun these guys. Big priority. Shredding the enhanced ones the ones that are in the middle of an attack animation because remember if you if an enemy is in the middle of its attack animation while it's in stasis it can still cause full damage to you and of course you know stasis sometimes just doesn't work so you have to keep you have to keep popping it and remember with the standard necromorphs you take out both their arms and they're dead They're all done, they're all gone. So now we just gotta drag this thing over here and once it's in place, run immediately. Just use the rest of your uh, stasis over here. To stun these guys as you're going up the elevator. But be very careful that you don't hit the elevator with your stasis. Which is actually why I usually like to uh, just go ahead and shoot these guys. As you can see, I hit the elevator with stasis, and if that happens, just uh, stand your ground and try to sever the limbs. Wait until the uh, stasis wears out. And 
And while you're on the elevator, take priority to destroy any lurkers that show up. Because those are the ones that can actually damage you while you're on an elevator. I restored power to the elevator. Take it up to the hangar bay and get the marker on the shuttle. I'm heading up to the flight deck now. Oh god. I'm just gonna run for it. Wish me luck. get into this room, we're going to set off the quarantine again. These are just standard necromorphs. Sever their arms. The priority severing their arms. A couple of enhanced will drop, it, will drop in at some point. Just do the same thing. Sever their arms. There's a vent directly to the right that they will pop in from. So in general, you can get away with uh, not using any stasis here, but if two enemies are on this little platform here, then that's when you want to pop stasis. Otherwise, you can just spray and pray, and you'll usually win. I'm going to dock the shuttle. Got to be careful now. Careful. Bringing the shuttle down now. The automated loading controls aren't responding. You'll have to shut down gravity in the hangar bay, and then manually bring the marker directly beneath the shuttle. by rotating those tracks right there. Rotating these tracks over here. Once we cross a certain line, workers will spawn in. There's uh, like five or six of them. One. like this and uh, grabbing an explosive barrel is uh, not really a quick and easy thing to do and that's when we want to take out the pulse gun marker reaches a certain point, uh, more enemies will spawn. There's a leaper right here and a bunch of lurkers to the left. Another leaper right there as well. They're enhanced leapers. Really all enhanced means is like nothing different with their AI, they just take more ammo to kill.
loading controls. Isaac, restore gravity to the room. I should be able to load the marker then. Loading cargo shipment 782. It's on board. Please come and join me. Together we can stop this hive mind. We can end this nightmare at last. During the next segment coming up, we're just going to uh, loot a bunch of stuff during the dialogue. Over Pay here. attention. Hurry! There's no time to waste. We must do it. Sorry, Isaac. I couldn't let him go through with it. I suppose I should thank you for finding the marker. We even managed without help from the USM Valor. Thank you for helping me find it, by the way. My department's been looking for this place for a long time. See what kind didn't know us? It was the government's mess to begin with. This whole planet is one big experiment. The marker? This <laughs> divine relic? Made by man. They reverse engineered it a couple of hundred years ago from the real marker, a true alien artifact recovered on Earth. They dug it up, studied it, and they made it their own. Then they brought it to Aegis 7 and activated it. And you've seen the result. The stuff of nightmares. They sealed the system, and no one would have been the wiser. But then the CEC blunders in and starts tearing the planet apart. The experiment was still alive. Kind was right about the hive mind. The marker would contain it, but that doesn't matter now, does it? I have the marker, and this entire system can go to hell. For what it's worth, you did a great job, Isaac. See you around. Or maybe not. <laughs> Isaac, Nicole, I need you to help me. Help us. Now. I'm... I'm in the flight control room. Please, Isaac, hurry! Please! I love you. After this dialogue, we go into this door to go up to the control room up here. Pull out the uh, plasma cutter. Get rid of these tentacle bitches here. You can pilot the shuttle remotely from here. Make us whole again. Make us whole again. It doesn't matter. She can't escape her fate. None of us can. Here it comes. I'll reprogram the shuttle so we can fly down to the colony. God, we're so close, Isaac. Now go! Get on the shuttle. I'll meet you there.
There's one more set of enemies to deal with, just a bunch of enhanced enhanced leapers. But we'll just use stasis to get around them. loaders to get the marker off the shuttle. Use the contact beam to kill these guys. Use the loader to bring it there and place it on the pedestal. Replace what was taken and make us whole again. Because this is the last chapter, uh, we don't really need very many nodes. Oh, I completely forgot to tell you guys to pick up Pang, but yeah. Or maybe I didn't forget. Whatever. You would have seen it. Either way, max out on pulse rounds. Because the pulse rounds are, as you know, super good.
I love this extra stuff though. Reckon you could max out another gun if you wanted. because there they are. Also check out my absolutely fantastic game. I gotta drag this battery over here so that this uh shutter will activate. Also a bunch of stasis recharge stations everywhere, so you don't need to worry too much if you're running low on stasis. We're gonna sit here in this corner and let everything come to us. Because there is no vent above us where enemies can flank us. Just chill right here. And we Gucci. Be careful with your stasis because sometimes you'll just use stasis on the bridge instead. on destroying the splitters when they are near other enemies. Otherwise, just, uh, just wait them out. And don't wait them out for too long because the blast radius is pretty, pretty big. Enemies are gone for now, but the quarantine is still active, so we need to keep dragging the marker until more enemies spawn, at which point we're just going to camp by the door and shoot more.
take priority on the lurkers. Stuck, so we have to use stasis. And once we get the marker through the uh, through the shutter, we just got to get rid of these splitters over here. You know, I've been calling them splitters this whole time, but I actually don't even know what their names are. Guardians here, obviously, just uh, try to snipe them, get rid of the tentacle bitches. I like to duck around the corner to get rid of the tentacle bitches. Once that's all said and done, those are the last two wall guardians in the whole game. So we can go to the store, buy some more, uh, buy some more ammo. Although we kind of don't even really need much more ammo. Because I'm about to do a trick that will let us skip the single hardest enemy mob in the entire game. Alright, here we go, final segment. So here's the deal. The final mob of enemies, whenever you drag the marker, can actually be delayed. Entering zero gravity. And you can do that by going over here and just uh, keep going. Just keep going. Although it might be to your benefit to just go ahead and kill the enemies. After we pass this gate over here, if you look down, there's the area where we pull the switch. We, uh, we don't want to go there. Instead, we want to go up here, and we want to pull the lever. If we pull the lever from over here, then there will be a delayed spawn on the uh, final set of enemies. And on top of that, the, uh, the brute that spawns in, as soon as we leave this area, does not spawn in either. And that's really all you had to do, was just, was just pull the switch from further up. It's a little weird. So on the way out, gotta be careful not to get hit by that, uh, by that blade like I almost did. These enemies do spawn in. Unfortunately, but that's okay. Let's get rid of them. Do a little zero G jump to get out of here. Zero gravity. If you
you did this trick incorrectly, there will be a brute here. I mean, you can do this mob, but... It is really, really annoying. I thought about saving for a moment, but then I realized the final boss is free. What am I even doing? So we'll refuel our stasis, and then what we're going to do next is we're taking the door on the left-hand side, actually. We want, to, we want to go through the door on the left-hand side. Oh, actually, this group, this mob of enemies doesn't spawn in either. There should be another mob of enemies here that doesn't spawn in. All that because we pulled a lever just slightly early. My recommendation would be to cross this bridge, by the way, and take the door from the left-hand side. it would be safer because this mob of enemies actually does spawn in it's just really really delayed actually it's like certain enemies spawn in whenever you cross a line actually but otherwise the first set of enemies in this room does not spawn of course I messed up by dragging it along with me instead of uh, going to the end point and dragging it You can see some lurkers are spawning in there. And as soon as we hit the button for the marker, we're just going to stun these guys. And then once the marker reacts, they just all die. And while they're all dying, we're going to head to the end of this bridge and then go back. Reason being, if we don't do this, then the final set of events will not happen. And the final boss won't spawn. We are whole. Emergency. Geo-orbital gravity tethers offline. Tectonic load. Geo-navigation cycle activated. see you again. 
just once. I loved you. I always loved you. on the face. After we destroy one core, we gotta watch out for the tentacle slap. Just strafe. After that tentacle hits, drop another core. Repeat process. It's gonna happen again. Depending on what side we are when the monster initiates its attack phase. And this, uh, this grab over here is scripted. So we're going to, uh, we're going to try to shoot the cores. If you have the, uh, contact beam, then you'll just destroy them instantly, but, you know, everything is so freaking shaky. Again, like, borderline impossible to aim. You gotta do what you can. Somehow this last core didn't like destroy itself. So I decided to pull out the contact beam. Start blowing up them cores. So it will always attack twice. Three cycles, I should say. So it'll go left, right, left, right. And so really, we're just gonna do A D A D. You know, strafe left, strafe right, strafe right, strafe left, whatever. Just strafe away from the tentacles. This boss is free. Going to 
go. This is going to do four tentacle slams, alternating arms. Just go to the opposite side. Just keep strafing from edge to edge and you'll win. Dead space, no damage on a possible, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you all very much for watching. Wanted to give some uh, shout outs to the Dead Space speedrunning community for uh, reference points and uh, for their support while making this video. Xfiery for uh, helping me to break down a lot of the tricks that I saw in uh, Rampancy's Impossible Mode speedrun video. Shout outs to Rampancy for their uh, impossible mode speedrun. Thank you also Helios Max. Living Looney Bin and uh, Shark Hat. Appreciate it guys. Anyway. If you like what you saw, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out my Twitch channel. That's where I record the majority of these no damage runs. But I have another, I have a whole lot of other uh, no damage runs of a bunch of other games. Survival horror mostly, but trying to branch out to other genres if you'll watch. Check out my playlists.
you would wish to monetarily support my bad challenge run habit, you can do so on my Patreon at patreon.com slash carcinogensda. But that's it for now. In case you all were wondering, yes, I'm playing Callisto Protocol. I don't know if or when I will do other Dead Space games, but I imagine I will at some point. That's pretty much it. So thank you all for watching, and see you all later. Bye for now. Clearing the game, you get a lot of bonuses. Military suit, backstory logs, 50,000 credits, 10 power nodes, and you unlock impossible mode. <laughs>